dependence to being effective in carrying out God's kingdom and God's kingdom agenda. We see how the whole thing played out. One of the things, he came to a point where Jethro had to advise him that he should make every member of the Jewish community to be effective and to contribute their own quota. You know the advice he gave him? Say, delegate, appoint people at different levels and give them responsibilities. Then it came to that point when the children of Israel, after eating manna, they started complaining for meat, balanced diet. You remember that story? They started complaining. And it was a very big experience for Moses. And he went to God and said, who am I? Why, why are these people, they are bothering me? Then God said, don't worry, I'm going to take care of them. <laughs> Moses made a statement, say, God, do you know the number of people you are talking about? How can you provide what, what will satisfy them? Hey, remember that kind of argument. And then God says, I am the almighty God that can do all things. Remember, all those things. Just to encourage his faith. But then it comes to the point that God said, since you think that this body is too much, appoint 70 elders. And these 70 elders, the Bible said that the Lord took from the spirit he has put in Moses and put in all of them. And they were prophesying. But there were two that were absent at that ordination. They were in the camp. And the Spirit of God also fell upon them. And Joshua, who was being mentored by Moses, went to him and said, excuse me, sir. There are two absentee leaders. And the Holy Spirit should not fall upon them. <laughs> Uh, they were not there. But the issue was that it was those people that God had chosen. Whether they were present there or not, the Holy Spirit had to empower them. And then Joshua said, no, it shouldn't be like that. Then Moses made this statement. He said, I wish that all the people of God are prophets. That is where we have another hint of the priesthood of every believer. That we could be filled with the Holy Spirit and do the same thing. But thank God that it was fulfilled when Jesus came. And it is that that gives us the competence that we, we need to develop. And so having said that, when it comes to being faithful, in carrying out what God has called us to, there are things that are very important that you have to know. So this man, the young Levite, they said, he just got up and said, because the temple service had been compromised, the, 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 the temple service had been relegated to the background, nobody was coming, they were not paying tithe, they were not contributing anything. But the anointing is still upon the priests and the Levites. So he got up and said, okay, let me go anywhere I can find something to do, activity to carry out, that we put food in my mouth and put clothing on my body, I will do it. And then he said, he got up. Then the devil had planned appointment for him. And we're told of one Micah who stole the mother's money and used it to buy an idol. Remember that story? And he set up a ministry. The Bible said that he first ordained his sons to be the priests. But then the devil ordered the step of this idol Levite. The Levite that has lost focus and priority 
into the house of Micah, and he presented his identity. He said, I'm a Levite. Oh, Micah said, oh, welcome. Welcome. And he explained his need. Micah said, okay, today you have found job. And an ordinary man had to lay his hand on the anointed of the Lord to set him apart as a priest to his idol. And that gave him a very false sense of security. He said that today, God is with me. And this Levi, young Levi started serving with dedication, with commitment, until chapter 18. And chapter 18 starts this way too. In those days, there was no king in Israel, and everybody did what was good on his side. Please, this is very, very important for us to know this. And this is where leaders, leaders, we have to take very, very, very good care of the ministry that God has given to us. There is a disconnect. There is a vacuum. There is a misleading. There is a misconception about the ministry that is happening today. Just because even though there are leaders by titles, but there are leaders who have lost relevance and lost focus. And you cannot give direction, you cannot give, you cannot help the people to have the right sense of ministry. And then he says there were this tribe, Dan, the tribe of Dan, who had not got their own position that time. So they were looking for a place to occupy. And he said they were moving about looking for unoccupied places. And as they were passing by the house of Micah, they heard the voice of the Levite. Maybe he was ministering to that altar and using the language of the priest of God and uh, speaking to that altar. Because the, Dan the Danites were acquainted. They knew. They were familiar with the voice of God's servants. May the anointed voice of the ministry that God has given to you not be heard in the wrong place. Because that is what is happening today. They had it. They recognized it. They went in there. They said, ah, of course, he must have introduced himself, though they, they didn't need his introduction. But then they asked him these three questions, which is very, very important if we are to be faithful and if we are to be committed. They asked him these three questions. Who brought you here? Judges chapter 18, verse 3. If you will open to it. Verse 3. In New International Version. Who brought you here? The second question was, What are you doing here? And then the third question is, Why are you here? If you cannot answer these questions, in a convincing way, you will never fulfill these requirements we are talking about faithful men that are competent. The question of who called you? Who called you into the ministry? Today, we have so many people in the ministry, but they don't know who called them. And if you don't know who called you, you will be misled. And that is what is happening with so many ministers that, that makes it then difficult for us to distinguish from the true servants of God. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of all these issues. 
You know, there are places where people are called into the ministry or promoted or given assignment based on certain things. <laughs> For example, in, in the West, in the West, I can, a ministry that feels that I'm very, very competent can employ me to become their international director. It may not ne be necessary as a calling from God. And that's why I have had three invitations to come and serve as international ministry or leader. One of them was Luzan. Luzan had called me to be their international director. There was another ministry, very notable ministry, because the time I was the general secretary of NEMA, I was the pioneer general secretary of NEMA, and the president of this organization had written a book, a survey book, which he called The Last Age of Missions, where he listed what God is doing in the different parts of the world. And we got a copy of it. That was the time we were about to start the Third World Missions Association. And Reverend Paya Baba, who was the, our president, I mean chairman of NEMA, we looked at it. Do you know the church or the ministry they reported from Nigeria as doing missions was Church of the Lord Aladura. So Reverend Paya Baba said, Ruben, you must write them to protest this. So I wrote this man. I said, this is what happened, and we don't agree with it. We know who is doing this, who is doing that. And then he replied me. In fact, that was the first time. He did a very funny thing. Because when he was to reply me, he addressed me as President General. And it was later on when we met, I said, I said How did you why did you address me as President? He said that he knows that Nigerian leaders have titles, and that they are always impressed by their titles. So since he didn't know what my title is, that's why he qualified it by, by calling me President General. Yeah. But then the other thing that he said, okay, we are going to, we are going to do another survey, and I want you to be part of the team that is going to do it. And we, we had to contribute. We did. In fact, that was the time that NEMA, the time we did our first survey. You know, we were doing a survey that time. We called it Satellite. So we had to feed it into that book. It was now published as From Every People. It was released at Luzan 2 in Malena in 1979. And that was, that was what then impressed this man. So through the uh, director of international ministries, who was the coordinator of that project, he told him, said, I think if we can get Ruben on our team, we are covered. So they met me in Manila and talked about it and said, no, um, I, I, until I pray about it. They now told me they were coming to Nigeria. Three of them. The international director, their president, I mean the president, the international ministry director, and their director for Africa and Europe. They said they were coming to visit me in Nigeria. I told them I was going to uh, Liberia at that time to meet our missionary brother Edith. Then they flew to Morovia to meet me there. And then now they started telling me the privileges I will enjoy if I become a member of the international team. In there, I laughed and told them, I said, mm -hmm. God has not called me to that. And that what God has called me to do, I will do it as a Nigerian and not as an agent of an international ministry. They looked at me 
I mean, they looked at themselves like that. Then they looked at me. And they said, because they told me, my family will move into the U.S., we we'll have this, we we'll have this, we we'll have that, blah, 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 blah. And they told me, say, they have never seen a man who rejected such offer. Then told, turned to me, they said, how can we serve you? How can we serve you? That was what brought the first resource center that we had in Ibadan here at Fort Ube Street. And then many other things. The first director of NEMA, they sponsored it. And many things. I was now telling them what to do. And what the president did was to invite me into his president's advisory team. Before the other one, when we started the Third World Mission Association, Dr. David Cho said I should come and be resident in Seoul. Um, and I was, the interna I was the international coordinator of the Third World Mission for 10 years. But when I told me, sir, whatever it is that I cannot do from Nigeria, please keep it. And that was why what he did was to now, <laughs> in fact, he told me if it were possible to shoot a satellite for me, he would do it for me to operate from Nigeria. And he did it because he equipped my office here in Ibadan. And so many other things. With all gadgets. And I was running that organization from Ibadan here. Before the Luzan came up with their own. See, why I'm saying this is because if you don't know who called you and then what he called you to do, other people will get you fixed. And that is why many people have missed it. Because, you know, this story of the young Levi, you know, by the time that Danites had everything, the Danites told, to, told him, he said, do you know what? We have more. We can offer you more. Why are you serving one man? Come and join us. We'll pay you more. Your status will increase. And because this young man had not answered this question of who called him, he left what he was doing. In fact, the Bible said that he even carried the idols of Micah and followed the people who could pay him more. And it's happening today. Then the second question is, what are you doing here? What is your ministry? What is your calling? And I want to also share this. Please, just uh, uh, endure with me. I'm not trying to blow my trumpet. I'm just trying to be faithful to what my friend asked me to do. Because... When he talked to me and what he wrote, he said, from your experience, he told me, from your experience, share with us what it means to be faithful and competent missionaries. That's what he shared with me. And that's what I'm trying, I'm trying to be faithful to it. It was in my form four in the secondary school in 1981 that God spoke to me that he had called me after the order of Paul. I didn't know what that meant. And it was after I had received divine healing. From four, that is before I had my school start. And the people that were praying for me, one of them spoke at and started saying, God had called you. You are going to serve him in all over the place. 1971. Then, two years later, God said, I should go to the university. Because what I did, the minute I finished my school start, I went to Ohanzara, a place called Oposi. I settled down there. I was planting churches. I thought I had started my ministry. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you will go to university. And to 
cut the long story short, the Lord directed me to the university that I attended, which is University of Ibadan here. The Lord told me which course to read. The Lord told me what I will do, I mean, where I will serve, and then what I will do after my service. But then, two years after this call, I came to the, I come to my church in the village. And then, a woman stood up and started prophesying. God has called you to go and serve him in the Holy Hill. Holy Hill is Assemblies of God training. But you are running away. You want to go and study. <laughs> then, when they were speaking, saying that, I started asking questions in my heart. Say, Lord, is this you? Can, could this have been you? Then, a woman, another woman got up and then confirmed it with a vision. She, said, she saw in a vision a ship. You know, this ship, ocean moving this, had been prepared for me, but I was walking by the seaside. So then that was when I asked the Lord, can this be true? Because the connotation was that God has called me to go and serve him in his own place, and I'm the one running away by trying to go to university. But remember, I didn't choose to go to university. It was the Lord who told me. Then when I said that, the Lord spoke to me again. He said, he, taught, he referred me to, to Psalm 32, verse 8. I will guide you in the way you should go. I will instruct you with my eyes. Do not be like a moon that will be broiled and forced to go where he didn't want. Then I held it. Then the pastor now blotted. I said, Brother Reuben, this prophecy has been coming here since you were away. Thank God that it had come today. Then that's another thing. That's another question. Is God a gossip? Can God be gossiping about me in a place where I was not? And in the place where I was, are there no prophets there? That was another thing that was a confirmation to me. Then, after saying that, he said, Brother Ruben, what do you say? I stood up. And this is in a church where you can't question authority. You can't question prophecy. I told him, excuse me, sir. It is not true. These prophecies are not from God. And everywhere was silent. And of course, I could say so because I have heard from God. I know what God told me. So he quickly closed the church. And then I, I walked out. Then the husband of one of those women prophesying, he stormed out with me. And he came to me and said, Reuben, my son, don't mind them. Don't mind them. They have been saying that they needed somebody from that village and from that church who will go to the hill and then join in rubbing shoulders with the other pastors so that they will have somebody to represent them. Instead of telling you, talking to you, they are putting it in prophecy. Because God cannot lie. And what gave me the boldness to say is because I knew what God told me. I knew what God called me. I know what he, he said to me. And of course, the Lord had to direct my steps all that while I finished my youth call where he sent me. One day like that, I was going to visit the director of Institute of Church and Society that time, Dr. Debola, with whom we are working in the Christian action team that were mobilizing Christians for policies in those days. I went to talk to him about my marriage. Because he comes to he comes from the same place as my wife. As I was getting out from uh, I was I was squatting with a brother in Kuti Hall because I just came from the NYC this thing. So as I was getting up to leave, the Lord said, Dr. Debola will ask you to work with him. 
and you will agree. I wrote it in my diary. Up to today, I still keep diaries. I don't know how many of you. Whether you keep diaries or what God is saying to you. So I, put, I wrote it down and then I got to the uh, Institute of Church and Society. After discussing what I went for and as I was about to leave, Dr. Dobler said to me, Ruben, I'm setting up a new center from September 1, that was 1979, and I want you to come and work with me. I opened my diary. He's a Methodist bishop. He doesn't believe in those things that we believed in. But I opened my diary and showed him. I said, sir, the Lord told me before I came here. And also after our wedding on September 1, 1979, I started working with him at a new center he set up. Center for Applied Religion and Education at Abu. And I was with him there. And that center was affiliated to War Council of Churches. And that it was true there. They say I traveled at that time, I traveled more. And there are many places I visited. To. Cuba was the first place I went to. And then went to, to Ethiopia, Indonesia. Germany, I was representing that center. But what we are doing is just social work. And I was struggling with that because I am an evan evangelical. I am a Pentecostal. And then Dr. Debola told me that I know that you are very sin, but don't preach the gospel because if you are preaching the gospel, you will bribe them. You are bribing them. Just let us continue doing that. I was struggling with that. And it came to a point that I decided I was going to leave him. By December 1981. I said, I'm leaving. So I called my wife. I told him, say, we are leaving. In fact, I went ahead to look for a place that I will go. And then my wife asked me this question. Thank God for wives that are also working in the will of God. Because even our marriage, God told me whom I will marry, told her to. So, I think we knew. She asked me this question. She said, God told you to come and work with this man. I said, yes. He said, has God said you should leave? I said, but what am I doing here? Didn't you see how this man is stopping me from doing the work of God? My wife said, if you want to go, you will go alone and will not go with you. Then I, I left, I called my prayer partner, the brother, and we started blowing in tongues. When we finished blowing in tongues, the brother said, Thor says the Lord, don't be like Jonah. <laughs> and that was how I just applied break. And then, on April 12th, 1982, April 12th, I just, please understand me, Bro, you are the one who said I should share from my experience. So, we were having an Easter conference in Ife. And then the whole place like that, suddenly somebody started speaking. He said, today I am making the call I have on Ruben Ezema, the public, I have called him into apostolic ministry. Then, to help me and others to understand this, he said, today, I am calling, I am also making my call upon Godwin Elemobo, some of you may know him, into pastoral ministry. Two of us, we are called at, our hands were laid upon us. April 12th, 1982. And it was during that meeting that the seed of CMF started coming together. We had a meeting after that. And then I got back to Bado. My director, Dr. Debola, called me and said, Ruben, I know that God's hand is upon your life. And I know that you have been working very hard. I'm releasing you at the end of this month. Do go and pursue what God has called you to do. 
So that was why on the 30th of April, I left the Center for Applied Religion and Education. And then God spoke to me, said, I am going to be your paymaster. You will not receive any salary from anybody. 1982 to now. And that has had been. And God has really been my pay master. I'm not, I won't talk about that. I mean, go into detail about that. But then, we decided that we're going to inaugurate CMF. Because by 1981, we had had an outreach, and I will tell you a story that related to that. An outreach at Idere, where we now decided we're going to inaugurate the Nigerian Christian Missionary Foundation. And we had fixed, after this encounter in uh, March, I mean in March, uh, I mean April 2000, and, uh, I mean 1982, we decided we were going to inaugurate CMF on May 15th, 1982. Pi Elton. How many of us know Pi Elton? Pi Elton was one of those people that God used to encourage us, to envision us. To tell us to pursue God's heart. And those days, his word was. <clears throat> he asked me to come to Elisha with my wife and the two brethren, Dr. Lado Imbo and, Doc, and late Dr. Um, Adeolua. As his manner is. So we went to Elisha. And then Pa congratulated, say, Yes, I've heard about what God has called you people to do. That is great. That is from God. And of course, he said other things too. Why God raised us up? Because God has, other people have felt, which was what he was telling us those days. But then Piety said, But I know what God has asked you to do. And we say, Pa, tell us. He said, There's one evangelist, Oduwele. That was a rural evangelist. He said that we should be following him wherever he does crusade. We do follow. And I raised my hand up. The knees of my brothers were knocking together. I said, Pa, that's not what God has asked us to do. Huh? That's not what God has asked us to do. And he said, We have failed even before we proceeded. And I say, Pa, God will give you grace to live, to see whether you are correct or God is correct. He died in 1986, four years later. And by that time, Samuel was already in seven countries. Because when we came out, my brain said, but why do you, I say, I asked myself, is it what, what he said, is it what God told us to do? What could give me the boldness to say it is because we heard from God. The same thing with this call, because four years after this uh, public declaration, which was 11 years after God has spoken to my hearing that he has called me after the order of Paul. In fact, I didn't even know what that meant until it was later I knew that it was mission. Four years after that, in, I mean, the, the public this thing, brother, God will learn more about, he has become a bishop. And we met in the embassy. He told me, say, brother Ruben, what is it that you say you are doing mission, Babi Allah, Babi Allah, why don't you come and open a church and become a pastor? And then you will have so many crowds, then there will be money for you to do missions. I say, brother, you know, that day, like Paul said, he said, Everybody saw the light, but I had the... And I told him, bro, God made it this thing. He called you into pastoral work. He called me into missionary work. Let me use the word so that it doesn't sound too hard. Because it's apostolic work. People will think like it's something. It's missionary work. And that's what I'm doing and I'm succeeding. You see, why I'm saying this is because... If you don't know who called you, because God called me and said, 
and he will be the one who will pay me. If I didn't know that, if I didn't hear that, eh, I would have been going hand in hand begging people. There are people who have come to offer me things. Even in this mission, uh, this thing that we, we, we lead, 2016, that we had a consultation, money consultation in Addis Ababa. There's one friend of us leading a foundation, a very big foundation in the U.S. They have been supporting what we are doing before, but they come and say, okay, put this program this way, put this one in the program. I told him, bro, we are not going to do That's not what God called us to do. He said, because of that, we will not put our money. Just carry your money, go. But God raised money. In fact, from Nigeria alone, in fact, one church gave us $10,000 cash. $10,000, $10,000. Another church sponsored the missionaries that came from North America, I mean North Africa, from Tunisia and Nigeria to participate in that conference there. And the brother was there. He saw what was happening. That things were moving without their money. If I didn't know who called me, if I didn't know what he has said, I would have started jittering and then say, brother, let us do it the way you want it. And you will fall out with God. And that is why all those people who say, come and do, we will give you this. I said, I am content with what God is doing for me. And God has been, God has been honoring it. I was the first mission executive to ride a, uh, what do you call it, a Toyota Land Cruiser. I was the first. And I didn't claim it. I didn't go out to name it and claim it. People called me and gave it to me. The same thing the house I'm living now. Oh, you know the story. Yeah, in fact, that Jeep it has come back to life. Because somebody has brought me a new engine and everything. They are refurbished. Maybe in the next two weeks it will be back. Because I have labeled it a legacy, legacy vehicle. And many other things. Why I'm saying this, brothers and sisters, is because what is happening today, like Bible asks about, can we find faithful people? But the Bible says that God is looking for those people whose heart are right with him so that he can show himself mighty on their behalf. And that is the thing. Can you, do you know who called you? Are, are you doing what he called you to do? Then the other question, why, is the question of motive. Why are you doing it? You know, that young man said, I want to do this ministry so that I will find food to eat and clothe on my body. That was his motive in ministry. And then the Bible said that those people, their belly is their God, and they are like hirelings, which is what happened to that young man. When people paid him, offered him more, he left that one and went to that place. And that is lack of faithfulness. And that's why many people are not lasting in the ministry, or producing results that will make impact. Those three questions, we must be settled. And if you are settled, then that is what God said through Jesus. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, 33, he says, if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, every other thing will fall in line. God takes over your business if you mind his business faithfulness faithfulness remaining at your post doing what God has asked you to do having your allegiance to him let us have a look again at other Hebrews chapter 3 that we, we made reference to in the morning talking about where our faithfulness should be directed. Hebrews chapter 3. Just to 
um, re refresh our mind about what we are talking about. Verse 2. He says, he was talking about Jesus. He said, he was faithful to the one who appointed him just as Moses was faithful in God's house. Faithful to the one who appointed you. And if you are not sure of who has appointed you. Remember, in the missionary enterprise, I know, my brother, you would have heard this. Mission, there was a time, there was a time that a missionary under CMF, <laughs> because the day CMF was launched at Trenchard Hall there, we became the first and the richest mission, mission organization. And by that time, there were only two others or three others that were existing. And that May 15th, we left Trenchard Hall with 33,000 naira. In those days, one naira was equal to four dollars. We left Trenchard Hall with that. In fact, Archbishop Idahosa, who was the, the one, because one brother, one brother gave us 10,000 naira at that meeting in 1982. Archbishop Idahosa rubbed his hand on his said that this is the first time he has seen an individual give that amount of money to ministry, not even to his own ministry. And you know, when we left there, we started saying, yeah, we have the money. And we announced, anybody that wants to come and work for God, come. And people came. We had this uh, base at Okiado, if you remember. Two buildings. One was 14 outside, 14 rooms, seven down, seven up. They were filled with missionaries. And then we had an office block that was 12 rooms. Everywhere was filled with people who are working for God. And we told them, if you're on level four, we put you on level five. And we're dishing out the money. Dishing out the money. Only one year, the money finished. We started calculating arrears. First of all, I started borrowing money. And unfortunately, it was my wife's salary I was borrowing to pay. Then we started calculating arrears. One night, one brother came to me. He told me, if I don't give him his money, he will kill me. That was when I knew that the thing was no longer a joke. So he will kill me. That night, I couldn't sleep. I was praying and crying, and my wife was sympathizing with me. Then the Lord spoke to me. He said, Reuben, are you not ready to do the work my way? He said, I gave you a test and you have failed. Are you not ready to do the work? I said, Lord, whatever you say, I will do. Then he told me, he said, tomorrow announce that from that day that he has taken over, that any person that is prepared to walk must live by faith. That gave me courage. So in our morning devotion, I quickly, quickly announced that this is what God has said. Though. He said, from now today, there's no payment. Anybody that wants to stay, you stay. If you want to go, you can go. You know, that whole crowd disappeared. It was only our mayor runner and my secretary that remained. And that was how God rebuilt our ministry. Some of my missionaries are here. You had the one that is five years today. No missionary of CMF is on any salary. But if you are even putting people on salary, what is the source? What is the, where is the money? You can guarantee, say, every month we pay you this. But God pays them more than that. Because the same way God said the best to me. That's what God. Some of our missionaries, in fact, there's one that every year somebody gives him a car. I told him, say, bro, this is your own dumb parcel. <laughs> because it got to a point, I told God, say, let this blessing, let this blessing also do it to any other faithful missionary. So that they will know that it is not only me. And God has been doing it. There was one of our missionaries by the time 
we now went back to this pay, I mean that you trust God. That one was complaining, complaining. Anybody that wants to come to work with say, say, don't come here, don't come here, you will suffer. But the brother didn't leave. So, and he was working at Kenji among the Busa people. So, we sent him, because what we do is that when people send money, we distribute it. At times, people will send money and say, this is for this missionary. We will, we give it to them. So, we send this brother 3,000 naira by postal, postal order, whatever it is. It took three months between here and Kainji, you know, Kainji, New Busa. Three months for him to get the slip. He ran to the post office and they told him, oh, sorry, oh, the advice has not come. When it comes, we call you. It took another three months, making six months for him to get 6,000, I mean, 3,000 naira. And then I called him, bro. Uh -uh. But within this month, I've not had any complaint from you. He said, oh God, you know what? I didn't even know that we didn't have anything because God has been providing here and there, here and there. I said, then I told him, do you now know that heaven is nearer the field than Ibadoya headquarters? And that's what missionaries miss. That's why we don't know. We think that it is the headquarters, it is the director that employed you. If the director is the one who has employed you, I pity you. You better resign and go and find something else. It doesn't work in God's enterprise. And God knows how to do it. After all, Elijah, you know how God took care of Elijah. Then, suddenly, we have from this brother. He said, oh God, you know what? I have been blessed with a station wagon, Peugeot station wagon in that place. I said, how did it happen? He said that some people came from Europe, these people, NGOs, who do whatever they are doing, studying that. They met this brother in that bush. And they asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm a missionary. He said, hey, missionary in this kind of interior place. They now collected his particulars. They went to UK. They ordered for a Peugeot, that is 504 station wagon, paid for everything and delivered it to him in the field there before we had it. And I, I called and said, bro, do you see now? See how God works his home. Because if the law, if they ask me, those who need vehicles, you won't be even number 20 or number 30. And if they pass it through a battle, I won't have delivered it to you because I know that it is not what you need, my own reckoning. But God will show you that he is the one who called you and wherever he has sent you, he is there. That is why God by, bypassed all the protocols and everything and that vehicle was delivered to him right there in the field. I don't know whether somebody is hearing. If we can answer these questions and then remain faithful in the things that God has called us to do. Because he said that this faithfulness is remaining faithful to the person who called you. And it is God who calls. And if God has not called you, don't answer. If you have answered the call of men, go back. But if God has answered you, if, things, if God the one called you, even if things are not working out the way you expect, remain there. At the appointed time, he will show up. Because he uses all those things to also prepare us. Can we trust him? Can we endure? Because if you read those things that Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, he talks about endurance. He talks about running the race eh, according to the rules. These are very, very important. So we have to know who called us and then why he called us and what he has asked us to do. Otherwise, you'll be doing banza work. Do you understand what I mean? There are many of us that are doing what the Lord has not called them to do. Please. Talking about faithfulness. Then things to remember. Things to remember. 
Paul was also addressing Timothy. He said, remember Jesus. Remember what you have believed. Remember who you have received. Who had mentored you. Because Paul was saying, look at me. Follow my lifestyle. I'm fully dedicated. Remember. Remember God's promises. And that is why it is good to keep record. Because God speaks. God directs. God instructs. So we remember our source. We remember our example. The example we are to follow. See, please, because that's also what happened, sir. That a time came when our missionaries started interacting and mingling with missionaries from the West who come with everything prepared, you know? They started as a, eh, but we, we need this, we need that. And that brings me to another <laughs> experience that I want to share with us. When the Lord spoke to our brother, John Adeniji, one of those brethren that God were raising up that time, that you should be sending him to Gambia. All that we needed was that, yeah, God has spoken. But we didn't have enough money. We had only enough money to buy one-way ticket. One way. One way. 283 Naira in 1986. 283 Naira to land him in Banjo. And then we changed uh, 25 Naira to... $100 because one naira was $4. Those are all that we gave to a brother and sent him off. And he got into Banjo at the airport. They stamped, permitted to enter for seven days. Despite the fact that that was a co-worse country, Brother John came out, opened that spot and said, Father, when you say you are sending me to Gambia, you didn't tell me I'm just coming to see the airport and come back. And my leaders who have agreed with you and sent me to come here, they are not expecting me back in seven days. That was why they gave me only one-way ticket. We have arrived here. The rest is for you. I said, why he was still there? Why is talking? Somebody came and touched him. He said, yeah, I learned you a missionary from Nigeria. He said, yes. Then, Brother John started spe speaking to me. It happened to be Brother Amos at the room when he was working with work. So he said, I came to drop off some of the missionary, work missionaries going, so um, let's go to my house. And he took him to his house. And then that evening, there was an advertisement in the uh, television said they were looking for, uh, I mean, a technical drawing teacher in the Gambia Technical College. And Brock had HND Mechanical Engineering from Polytechnic. So the following day, he went and applied. That day, they gave him work, gave him work permit, gave him resident permit, put him on salary, and then gave him accommodation. And that was how Brother John was the first missionary that planted a church among the indigenous Gambians. The church had been existing among the Aku people. That's the returning slaves. They call them Akus. That's why we have methodists and all this. But there was no Wolof person in the church. It was Brother John. Next tomorrow, Sunday, we are kicking off our own convention. The person who is leading, who is the national director of our work in the Gambia is a Gambian. And many, we have planted many churches there. The day they launched their first album in Wolof, I was there. And when they were singing, people from outside like this, many people rushed, they rushed into the church and they were joining, you see, because that was the first time they had gospel music in their language, in their mother tongue. And that is what we are talking about. 
But they know we were at a conference like this, a conference of mission leaders. And we are talking about how we send our missionaries. And they were sharing their own. Yeah, before our missionaries leave from U U.S., or UK, there will be a guarantee of $50,000 a year, and uh, it must be guaranteed for four years before they move their things to come. And then when they come, of course, there are all that things that are going to go. Then I told them, I said, that is too much. Oh. If you give us that, we can use it to send 10 missionaries in a year and support them. Do you know what they told me? Say that if we say that God is calling us, let God give us our own money to do it. That it is their own money. But then the argument came up when I shared how we send our missionaries. They said that is a very callous way of sending missionaries. I took them to Matthew chapter 10 eh? from verse 5, where Jesus said, If you are going, go. Yeah, verse 9, he says, don't go with any strategies and don't go with money in your pocket. Have you read that? I said, we are the ones sending missionaries God's way. Because in verse 42, Jesus says that people will be raised to support you. He said, those who will give you a cup of cold water in the name of a prophet, they are also fulfilling their own things. Why are we robbing them of that blessing? And many other things I don't want to bore you with. Maybe, let me just quickly, <laughs> let me quickly round up because I don't want to keep you very long here. But this thing we are talking about is true. If it worked with those people in those days, it is working with us today, it will work forever. And those are the kind of people that God needs now. That's why some of, I wish that you will be there from Monday at Idere. Even, even that place, the way God gave it to us, Idere. The, the Lord gave it to us. The current Oba, only there of Idere. And it's a, it's a first class Oba. He's a student. Third year at Emmanuel College here. On the 18th, which is the last day of our convention, we are ordaining him to the ministry. He, he, it was Archbishop uh, Akifenwa, the Anglican Church, that sponsored him at Emmanuel College. But when it came to his ordination, he said, I want to be ordained by Christian Missionary Foundation because of what God has done with our ministry in that area. That's why we have our base. And this is the last one that, that God did that this man, a whole first class oba, submitting himself to us. Well, he wants to go and lay hands on his head. We have, we have told him what it means to be, and we told me if you violate these rules, we will the ordination, we will derobe you. Yes. So it is working, brothers. And I'm told, what I'm sharing with you now is what is happening now. And God still demands the same from every one of us. Then, let me just leave that and uh, run quickly so that we can, we have to know who our source is. I mean, remember our example, remember our rewarder. Then what do we do? What do we do? One, we must remain obedient. You know, that was one of the things that Paul said. When there was all this pull, and remember what he told King, uh, King Agrippa. He said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And what he said, he said, everybody saw the light, but I had the voice. And that is what I'm following. And when we read Philippians chapter 3, he now tells us that I have had to count every other thing as a loss for the excellency of knowledge of Christ. So that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and that I may be a partaker of his suffering. 
and, and made him to be focused. Because that's another thing. <laughs> if you are going to qualify as a faithful servant, you must remain focused. That's also one of the advices that Paul gave to Timothy. Say, don't be distracted. Know what you're called to do. Give yourself wholly to it. Keep focused. That is another problem that we have. There are many of us today. <laughs> you are going on the road that God has said to you. You then meet and uh, somebody who is already you 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 they, they talk. Go there. You go there. You meet another person. You no. You must know what God has called you to do and follow Him. And that's why the Bible says that our focus should be on Jesus. And then be submissive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That is because he cannot mislead you. Otherwise, you know, for example, Philip was deployed to be doing something else by Peter. Do you remember that story? But when the time came, God redeployed him. You remember the story? And then when he was in that place, the Holy Spirit took him out from that place and took him to a desert. The same thing with Paul. Paul, you know, there was a time that they felt they wanted to do a ministry in the place that they, they, they have been walking before. Acts chapter 16, from verse 6 to 9. He said, the Spirit forbade them. They turned the other direction. The Spirit said, don't do. It's the right thing but you don't do it here. And he said that while they waited, in a dream, a man said, come over to Macedonia and help us. Then they knew that that is the new place. That's another thing that will help us to remain faithful. And then we should remain humble too. We should remain humble. That is one of the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. If you are going to be faithful and also accomplish what God, you must remain humble because that's a way that our success gets into our head. And because of that, you become a despot. May God forbid. And then finally, I just want to read these passages or this uh, this statement. For us, and we round up. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51, Jesus told the parable of this faithful servant. He said, The man that his master gave charge over his fellow servants to give them their food, their portion at the appointed time. He said, But faithful. I said, blessed is that man when his master comes shall find him so doing. Doing that which your master has committed into your hands. Doing that which your master has committed into your hands. And then, and it requires therefore a sense of urgency and a sense of accountability. Do you know we're going to be accountable? If we know that we're going to account for everything the Lord has given to us, then we must be faithful. Because we will come. And he says he's going to reward us according to our faithfulness. Then, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, which is also repeated in Luke chapter 19, it is talking about faithful in little things. If you are faithful in little things, then a greater thing shall be entrusted to you. Then let me tell you this other story. In those days, you no. Know, because when we were in the campus, the Lord taught us how to exercise authority as believers. And one of those areas 
for those of you who can remember, if you remember what happened in 1978, um, Ali must go. Those battles we fought. Okay. When we discovered that the communists and the socialists were using the students' union, student union leaders, to carry out the agenda, which we rose up to oppose. In fact, people like Comrade Olaone, Comrade Onimole, some of you remember them, who were the chief, listen, they were lecturers at you are here. It was when we discovered that they were the ones that were causing trouble for Nigeria. Through prayers and social action, they were exposed, and the government, well, that was how the campuses had peace. But then we decided that we were going to make sure that Christians are in the position of leadership. Because IVCU, I mean, um, the Student Union of University of is the largest in Africa. And so we now sponsored a Christian brother to contest that year. That time we were already out of school, but we had connection with them. And when the elections, when the results came out, this brother lost to a Muslim with 1%. And the team pained us. And we were asking God, why? Because we had done everything we could to ensure that that brother would win. So, shortly after that, we were to have a conference, sister conference, in Offa. And, I mean, in um, uh, Elori, this brother was charged to go as a kind of this thing to go and be monitoring things. So, four days to the conference started, Brother Charles, Charles um, Adekoke, who was also the president of IVCU that time, from Elori, came and called me. He said, Brother Ruben, that he was from Elori, he went to the venue, and the principal said, he doesn't know about any conference coming. But whenever we ask this brother, he said, oh, praise God, everything is in order. He said, what was happening? And it was too late to begin to advertise. In those days, there was no GSM, uh, this thing. So we had to quickly go and find a venue in offer. offer. And what we did now was to put notice at the college in Elori. People will pass offer. Those coming from the East passed offer to get to Elori only to be told. That was the most chaotic conference I've ever seen. And so while we were there, we were talking, talking, uh, talking about the other things. Brethren said, ah, let's forgive him, let's forgive him. And then we were to have one follow-up meeting in Badoya. The brother volo volunteered that he was going to coordinate it. I said, no. The brother said, ah, let us, let us uh, forgive him, let us give him another chance. But when we got back to Ibado, two days after that, I said, I don't want to take chances. I went to, to the campus to check. And the brother was nowhere. There was this social uh, club that was going on tour. It's called excursion. He had traveled then. It was when I put my hand on my head. Then the Lord said to me, have you seen why I didn't want him to be the president of the largest student union in Africa? That he would have disgraced Christianity and the dress us. Not being faithful with little. And you know what? That brother, he was engaged to a sister. Three, they prepared everything, prepared printed card. Three days, three, three months of the wedding, he walked out of the relationship. Up to today, he's still going about. When IVCU had the um, alumni this is recently, he was there. And then when we were coming, in fact, I met him one day, he was carrying this key, key, bunch of keys. I said, hey, brother, remember, my car broke down. Now lie, never buy any car. That is how he had been. Not being faithful with a little thing. And that's what's keeping many of us. And then the other thing said that if you're not faithful with another man's, how can your own be entrusted to you? I want to stop there. 
Because the other thing that he talks about is, Paul said is that he said, what you have learned from me, practice it. What you have seen, practice it. Practice makes perfect. We are talking of competence. Competence doesn't come by faith. It comes by doing. It comes by doing. And that was what was said about Ezra. He said, Ezra made up his man to know the will of God, to do it, and then to teach it. The same thing was said about Jesus. By Luke in Acts chapter 1 verse 1, what Jesus began to do and to teach, it is only what you know you can use and you can pass on to others, which is another thing. Let me tell you, if you are holding what you know, you will never be competent. Passing on, which was what you say, pass on. What you know, pass on. There were the times people came to me and say, hey, Brother Ruben, but you are too generous. Hey, this thing, people have written books with my notes, with my teachings. And people say, because if I do any person, as I give them. <laughs> like John Austin told, told us one time we were there, uh, we were in his church. And um, they, are, they announced to introduce, they said there are Nigerians who are there. He called us to greet us. But he said that somebody had come from uh, Port Harcourt. Somebody walking in Shell had come back from Port Harcourt. And they told him that he saw his books and his um, cassettes on the streets of Port Harcourt. So when they introduced us, he said, Brethren, I learned that you are publishing, you are selling my book and my my uh, uh, this thing in your country. Go ahead. Your copyright, I mean, my copyright is your right to copy. Then he said, why I produce these things that you get to people? If you can sell it and make money of it, provided it gets to people, go ahead. Until the daughter told her, it is not these people. He was saying that we are the ones. Yeah. The, sister, the daughter told her, it's not those people. He said, okay, even if you have not known how to do it, if you can help me spread my teaching and all these things by selling and making money of it, as long as you get it out, go ahead. And that is a kingdom attitude. And that is what I do. I have helped people eh, to do better than I'm doing. And people say, hey, why are you sharing? Why are you because I discovered that the more I give, in fact, that's what the Bible says. It is more blessed to give than to receive. The more I give, I create space to receive more. The more you pass on. That's what Paul said. Pass it on. And let it not stop with you. Pass it on. Let the other people pass it on. That is why we perpetuate the ministry. And that is why we also improve in our competence. May the Lord grant this kind of grace to every one of us here. And never think you have arrived. Because he said, keep on learning. Keep on studying. <laughs> Do you know what, sir? Even after I prepared these things, I still keep on preparing learning. Even this afternoon, what I have, what I've uh, been doing now, it was new things I learned between the time I left here and this time. Keep on learning and keep on passing on to other people so that there will be more space to receive. Your capacity to receive is increased by the time you are giving out. God bless you. Let's rise up on our feet. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I think some people's cups are overflowing by now. Am I correct? I said I believe your cups are overflowing. You will never, never remain the same in Jesus' name. The Spirit of God will fall on us to be faithful. I didn't hear your amen. 
You know, sometimes when these things happen and we hear the word of God like this, it's not reading too many verses, but sharing with us many years of experience. So that the mistakes that are made, you will not make it. Praise God. So, I want to thank God that you are here tonight. And you had very clearly, practice makes perfect. Praise God. And I showed you on Wednesday that the man of God must be thoroughly furnished unto good works. But before that, in verse 16 of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, 17, it tells us how a man of God can be perfect. And he told us the instruments of how it is done for the sake of right standing with God. So tonight, you have heard the word of the Lord once more. And it is not the kind of word that you can go away and do nothing about. There are decisions to take right now. There are changes taking place right now. So I want you to pray with me and say, Oh Lord, the changes that should take place in my life, Help me not to resist. Help me not to fight against the word of the living God. If I'm supposed to be somewhere and I am not there, Lord, send me there. If I'm supposed to leave one place and I'm not leaving, oh God, help me to find out. Shall we pray right now? You are not in rebellion. But you are following the Lord with all your heart. We are to follow obedience of the living God. So I want you to pray and ask God, please help me. I consecrate my life tonight. I submit my life to you, O God. I want to hear you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know what you are saying. I want to know how you are leading. I want to know where you are taking me. I don't know. I want to know why I'm here in the earth. I want to follow that which you have indicated. Yes, no more confusion in my life. No more confusion in my, in my life. No more confusion in my life. No more confusion. In the name of Jesus. Clarity, 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 clarity. Let it be clear, let it be clear, let it be clear, let it be clear. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes to see. Lead me, O oh God. Father, teach me, Father. I am teachable, I am teachable, I am teachable. Teach me, Father, teach me, lead me, guide me, help me to see. I do not want to walk by myself. I do not want to lead myself. I do not want to go what way I want to go. I want to go where you ordained me to go. I want to walk where you want me to walk. I want to lead where you want me to lead. Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I want you to satisfy your life in my life. I want to be someone who live like you. Lord, help me tonight. To make a decision for a direction. Let there be a decision for a direction. In the name of Jesus. Let me know. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake up from the slumber. Wake up from the sleep. It is time to arise. It is high time to arise. Brethren, arise. Brother, arise. If you are a sinner, arise. If you are a me. To the streams of water i want you to lead me to the place of satisfaction not to the place of test not to the place of dissatisfaction not to the place of complaining all the time complaining all the time regretting all the time complaining oh god this is the day that you have made and i will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of Jesus, let's terminate tonight. Let the wilderness terminate tonight. Now direction. Now a leading. Now the voice of the living God. Resosh katopre.
break up the plaster from your life. Remove that bandage from your life. Your life is bandaged. Your life is plastered. Remove that plaster. Remove that plaster. Be healed completely. Be healed completely. Remove that bandage. Remove that bandage from your life. Be healed tonight. Stop patching up. Stop patching up. Stop patching up. Stop patching up, says the Lord. Stop patching up. Stop patching up. There is a way to remove every bandage. Today is the day to remove those things that are not true. Today is the day to take away the false and to face the truth. To stop complaining. I have no money. Arise and stop complaining. I have no helper. Arise and stop complaining. The work is too much. Arise and stop complaining. It's not been done well. Arise and stop complaining. Redosca patala, the wisdom of God. It's pouring out power for those that are ready to, to be lifted. For those that are ready to stand up and serve him with all our hearts. For those that are ready to say, here I come. I die upon the altar. Use my life. Send me, O oh God. So God. Redu great do broke part to Lekaya. Yanes Ketali and the Kadi at the back there. God is breaking your old patterns. Why don't you yield tonight? God is speaking to your heart. Let your patterns be broken. Let your usual lifestyle be broken. Let your usual way of doing things be broken. Let your thinking be broken. Stop complaining. Stop agitating. Stop complaining. Put away your jealousy. Put away your selfishness. Still put away that which is man. And take on Jesus. Take on Christ. Stop patching. Stop patching. Remove that bandage from your life. Capacity got to he has got to go go forward. Your capacity has got to go grow. Your capacity has got to enlarge. So I hear the word increase. Increase from the inner man. Increase. Increase in your inner man. 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 Redosco Pakababalaha. Ye roca bandeli behaya. Yes, make it therefore God will take you up from there. Arise from the stupor. Arise from the sleep. Arise from the stupor. Arise from sleep. Wake up. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up the mighty women. Wake up the people of God. Wake them up all over Ibadan. Wake up all over Nigeria. Wake up to the voice of the living God. All over where the voice is being heard. Wake up. Wake up, brother. Wake up, sister. You are not too old to serve the Lord faster than you are doing. Don't slow down. Redicro to Pakaya. Arenda soproki di halabarata. Yandos kapete like a potter's vessel. To render like a potter's vessel. Those issues that control your life but are not of me. Break them into shreds. Destroy them into shreds. Take them out of your way and do it my way. Take them out of the way and do it my way. Fill the water pots of your life. I fill it by the power and turn it into wine of the Holy Ghost and turn it into the Spirit in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your right hand on your hand on your stomach and begin to pray in tongues right now. In the name of Jesus, of God, be filled with the power of Jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Yes, God to the end of higher. Out of belly. Loud, 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 loud. Let it be strong. Let it be what come out of your mouth strong. Strong, 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 strong. 
dot of God come out from thence. Let the power of God roll islands. Then all the dry places. Then all the dry lives in your family. All the dry lives in your school. All the dry lives in your community. They shall be filled with water. Anywhere you came from. Either from the mission field or from the cities or villages of this nation or outside of this nation. Be filled with power. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive power tonight. Receive power tonight. From the crown of your head, let the fire of God strike you. Let receive tonight the word of wisdom. Receive tonight uh, the word of knowledge. Uh, receive tonight uh, a discerning of spirits. Uh, receive tonight uh, the working of miracles. Uh, receive tonight uh, the gift of faith. Uh, receive tonight uh, the gifts of healings. Receive tonight tongues and interpretation. Receive tonight the gift of prophecy. Be directed by God. Take up the determination. Take up the resoluteness. Take up the faithfulness. Take up that you are resolute tonight. That the resolution of God has come into your life. No more shaky, 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 shady, shady, shady. No more. No more wishy washy. No more up and down. Redo the broken part of the Yeah, the Spirit of God has come to break that pattern. Accept it tonight. Receive it tonight. I break to Pacapa. Yenda panic. Kill that snake. Don't let it leave. Kill that poison. Destroy it. Destroy it. You have the authority. You have the power. Kill that snake. Kill that snake that trouble you. Kill that distraction. Kill that poison that wants to kill you. So that you are not fulfilling the will of God. Kill that poison. Destroy that poison. Kill that snake tonight. Kill that snake in your life. In the name of Jesus. And then let the Holy Ghost come upon your life. Yield to him. If it's not coming. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to take away the hindrance from your life. And just come. And just come. And fill you with power. Yet did so talk about heal the sick. You cast out devils uh, and drink it to Lambas. Uh, it's not time to complain. Uh, it's time to do the will of God. Uh, all Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. complaints no more complaints the power of god is upon your life the power of god is upon your life be obedient be obedient walk with him cooperate with him in the name we pray father in the name of jesus Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak more life to your life. We speak more power to your life. We speak more dedication to your life. We speak more commitment to your life. We speak more routine to your life. That you are planted in the house of the Lord. That you are planted in the will of the living God. That you are unmovable and unshakable. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that can be shaken in your life tonight. Let it be shaken away. Let it be shaken away. Let it be shaken away. Let it be shaken off. In the name of Jesus. Let your life be pure and true. Let your life be true and holy. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, that you are acceptable to our Lord Jesus Christ, that you are acceptable to the Holy Spirit, 
that your angels will never run away again in the mighty name of jesus receive direction receive the leading of god receive the guidance of the holy spirit receive the word of the living god receive the word from above receive the leadership of the almighty return to where you ought to be return to your estate go back to that 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 place that god ordained for you in the name of jesus go back to the false situation go back to the false situation where god will begin to build you up once more all the regrets of your life father tonight we sink them in the ground we sink them in the ground we sink them in the ground all the complaints all the regrets all the things to say if, if, if i knew if I, I knew wipe away your slates tonight in the name of jesus wrong marriage will not delay you wrong decisions will not pull you down be repaired in the name of jesus be repaired in the name of jesus all lives that have been patched for as we were praying i saw bandages on many legs i saw plaster here and there many lives have been plastered and managed but tonight god said i have come to remove the plasters i have come to remove the bandages your life will no longer be managed you will live a true life you will live as a true christian you will be in the open and god will back you up god will support your life in the name of jesus and any power that say you will not go into that direction we bind them tonight in the name of jesus we bind them tonight in the name of jesus he said whatsoever we bind on earth is bind in heaven and whatever you bind here now is bound in the heavens they shall no longer be able to overpower you in the name of jesus you will do the will of god you will walk the way of god you will go the direction of the almighty you will not do your own will thank you father blessed be your name O oh god may we remember this day may we remember a turning point may we remember a landmark may we remember this pillar may we be satisfied that here was it plant your own pillar tonight thank you father blessed be your name hallelujah jesus name amen hallelujah